welcome to Somerset Showcase. Uh, our guest today, in, in my opinion, is really one of the unsung heroes in our town. Bill Aguiar runs a lot of programs from behind the scenes that impact kids from the time they're in elementary school right through high school. He runs the Kids Summer Learning Center, he runs the summer school, and he runs the community evening school. So. Welcome to our show today. Thank you, Judge. Uh, Good to be here. You're, you're having a busy summer with the Kids Summer Learning This Center. is the busiest summer we have had. Uh, I anticipated a busy summer because of the last school year. I did not anticipate it getting as busy as we've had. Um, we've exceeded our numbers much more than I had planned for, um, which meant we had to revise our plans and adjust accordingly, which we've been able to do. But yes, it's been a very, very successful summer. Uh, we're servicing a lot of youngsters. Um, I think we have excellent programs. Um, and that's because of the staff. I've recruited, we have an excellent staff. Um, the numbers of just, uh, well, that capacity, basically, in all our programs. So you have a lot of classes that kids wouldn't take in, in school. And, and can you tell me your your philosophy behind the types of classes you offer and what you want the kids to get out of them? Well, we have two separate programs going on right now, actually three separate programs. One, we have our summer school academic program, uh, which is basically for students in grades 6 through 11 who have struggled in school. They've either failed classes or, or they've just struggled. This past school year, those numbers were exorbitant for a lot of different reasons. So currently, I have about 237 individual students in my summer school program. We run 27 different classes a day. These are academic classes. Um, we seat in the classrooms about 390 students a day because many of the students take multiple classes. Um, we have all types of math classes from grade six math right up through algebra two. We get several science classes, several English classes, science classes, history classes, um, all the basic academics we have to assist students. Uh, we've exceeded our numbers by almost 100 students uh, from previous years, which meant we had to increase the staff. Um, in addition, we have COVID restrictions we have to adhere to and, and protocols, which we've put in place. Um, in all my programs since we started, uh, we have a mask. I don't call it a mask mandate, but we have a mask policy that everybody, students, staff, wears their mask as soon as they walk in the building until they leave the building. Um, I was given the option by the superintendent to make whatever policies I thought were best for my program. Um, some of the other programs in the elementary schools don't have that mask requirement, and I understand that. Those buildings are different, and it's a different age group. Uh, I have found it to be very, very successful, very helpful, and very beneficial. I had no problems with it. Um, and now with things changing, uh, with the mask, mandates being put back in place in many places. As you know, the governor just the other day said everybody in Bristol County should be wearing a mask again, whether you're vaccinated or not, when you're indoors. Um, so our, that policy has worked very well. Um, in addition, we, we do uh, social distancing, you know, uh, with the students and all our programs, which means in the past, I may have more than one student using the same computer. We don't do that anymore. We don't do as much group work anymore. Um, or if we do, we control it, how we do it. Um, from an academic perspective, one of the things in our program that I'm very proud of, we have strong academic programs, be it summer or not. One of the things I've always insisted upon and my staff has always adhered to is the integrity of our programs has to be strong academically. These 237 students are all students who failed this past school year. So we have an obligation to help them 
close that educational gap that existed, not only through their fault, because of, but because of circumstances as well this year. And I think we do a pretty good job of that. Um, I've had students and parents say their son or daughter has learned more in summer school than they did all year, which is a compliment to my teachers. Um, and that's the key. Uh, getting good staff, which is very difficult to do in these days. Um, it is normally, but it was even more so this year. I have an excellent staff. Um, I have 23 staff members on the academic end of the program. I have probably eight or nine different schools represented on my staff. The student body comes from 11 different schools seven different school districts. So we have a wide variety of staff uh, and a wide variety of students coming from different places. And that's another reason for the mask requirement is I get so many different people from so many different areas coming in um, to protect everybody. And it's, it's been very successful. On the other side, the Kids Summer Learning, which I started seven years ago, um, has a strong academic component to it, but it's more fun oriented. Yep. We want these kids to enjoy learning, whatever it may be, because the enjoyment of learning translates into other areas. Um, that program, this year we have 315 students coming at different times. That's a, a series of one week programs. Each program is one week in duration, either two or two and a half hours a day, uh, depending on the class. All my classes are full every week. Um, we do Minecraft, we do coding, we do build your own guitar, we do music technology, we do Glee group, we do kids baking, we do kids kitchen, we do drawing, we do summer band, um, and I'm sure I'm leaving out a couple, but yeah. it's a very, very popular program. The program runs from 9 to 11 or 9 to 11.30 every day. Um, we have students getting dropped off at 8.30 because they're so anxious to get into class. Yeah. So again, we've extended staff hours. I get staff there at 8 o'clock for a 9 o'clock class. I have other class students. Uh, staff members who come in at 8.20, started at 8.30, now we're back to 8.20, 8.15, to greet, we greet each individual student as they come in. Parents drop them off at a designated drop-off. We take the child from the car to the classroom, and then we escort the child to a designated pickup spot uh, outside the building. <clears throat> so the parents are never in the building. These are kids who've never been in the building before, for the most part. Uh, so we have staff available all day to escort them to the restroom should they need to go or to, uh, uh, you know, occasionally somebody will get a little scrape or a little burn on the, the hot gun, you know, the glue gun or something like that. We take them to the nurse. Um, that's a very, very popular program. Um, I don't have any seats in any classes in that program. Wow. Um, yeah. You almost get to the point where, I don't want to say you're too successful, but you, you can't keep growing because you have no room. Yeah, yeah. You know, you can only accommodate so many students safely in a class. My kid's kitchen or my kid's baking, my kid's cooking. I limit the class to 12 students. I have an instructor and a, an assistant. So that's 14 people in that room. It's, it's not a big room and it's a kitchen and there's a, you know, there's gas ovens, there's burners. These are kids who've never been in a kitchen before like this. So safety is our primary concern. One of the classes I left out was the engineering class, which is very, very popular. Again, we limit the class size because we're, we're introducing these kids to tools they've never been exp exposed to. This week, um, every student's building their own wind windmill, and they'll take that home with them at the end of the week. But we also incorporate the academic part about environmental uh, uh, issues and energy issues about windmill or wind power, and then building their own windmill. Which 
is a big uh, issue so in Somerset right now. The kids' summer learning, while there's fun, we've also got built-in academic components to it that the kids may not even be aware of, but we're teaching them something. Another class is fashion design. I got 12, in this case it happens to be all girls, 12 young girls in that class, uh, designing and making their own clothes. And they love it. Uh, you know, today it was 11 o'clock, the parents are waiting outside, the kids are still in class. <laughs> I had to go to the class and say, let's go guys, it's 11 o'clock, your parents are outside waiting. Uh, nobody moved. <laughs> Finally, the teacher said, okay guys, stop putting your stuff away and we'll, we'll continue tomorrow. Um, again, it's a tribute to my staff. Um, these are talented staff people in their own right um, who are giving up their mornings. Some of these staff work several weeks. Some work periodically, uh, depending on their own schedule. Um, all these programs, their success depends upon the people in the classroom. And, and I'm very particular about who we recruit, the type of person we put in there. Um, and they have to buy into our philosophy and our culture. Um, and that's what makes us so successful. Like several people who have come back year after year, they help recruit other people. Um, and, and, and that's the key, planning and preparation and a committed staff. And I, I don't think I could ask for a better staff. I need the program. Um, another p component is our evening school program, which is for a totally different school environment. These are the older students who have struggled in school, who have left school for various reasons. So we provide them an alternative path to getting their high school diploma. Again, our academics are strong. We demand academic integrity. We have a higher passing grade requirement than they do in their day school program. We have more re credit requirements than they do in the day school program. Um, they put in as much time as they would in a regular day school program. Uh, in the summer, because that's a year-round program, we run three semesters, September to January, January to June, June to September. In the summer, we have students from other schools as well as our own school in Somerset who did not graduate but they're close to graduation. They're what we call delayed graduates. So the sending school will say, I have this student who needs to take an English and a math class. Can you provide that for him? And then he will get that school's diploma in August, uh, meaning their requirements through our programs. Um, this year I'll have two students from Tiverton High School who get their Tiverton High School diploma. I'll have two students from Case High School will get their Case High School diploma, as well as our regular evening school students. Um, some of them are finishing their uh, academic requirements and they'll get their diplomas. Um, that's a program that we work real hard at. It's a needed program. It's a beneficial program for these people. I don't know the numbers over the years, but it's been many, many students, hundreds of students who would have been high school dropouts. They were high school dropouts yeah. when they come to us. And they end up getting the high school diploma. Many of them have then gone on to successful careers in various occupations. Some have gone on to community colleges, then gone on to a four-year college. I have a couple who have even gone on to a master's degree. Hmm. Um, at 17, they were high school dropouts. Um, One of the things that I'm always so impressed with with that program is when you have the graduation and you get up there and you tell stories about the challenges that these kids had to overcome to go back to school and, and get their diploma and then what they had to do to, to get their diploma. Can, can you tell me about some of the obstacles that these well, kids had? And, and we, we kind of joke amongst ourselves, I have everybody nobody else wants. <laughs> Or they don't want them. Yeah. Or a combination of both. Which is not really the story. Um, yeah, I've got students in my program who have faced or continue to face numerous personal, social, economic, health issues. Um, 
for whatever reason, the situation they were in could not accommodate them and their problems, or they couldn't accommodate that kind of a schedule. Um, so it's much more than an academic program because they need to come to school to succeed. And that was part of the problem in case they didn't come to school. Um, but in order to be able to come to school and succeed, they need help in dealing with these other issues. And, and we try to provide that as best we can, and I think in many cases we do a, a good job. Um, I, I can tell, I think of students who, um, one young lady graduated a couple of years ago. She lost her mother when she was like four years old. She was like 16 and she lost her father. Now you got a 17 year old kid who's got nobody. You know, living with her grandparents, and, and, and that's great, the grandparents took him in, but she's still lost, so to speak. Um, school was not an issue. Uh, she came to us, we helped her out. Um, you know, I would talk to the grandparents. In this case, I happen to know the grandfather. Um, and after a couple of years, she, she, she loved coming to school. She was a, ended up being a high school graduate. I have other students who have left for emotional reasons, social reasons. Other kids have left because they were bullied uh, in various situations. Um, other kids left because extenuating health issues and they just missed too much school. And then, then they don't want to go back to the regular yeah. program. Uh, or they're too far behind to go back. Um, I have young mothers, 17 years old, and, and they're pregnant, or 18 years old, and they got a three-month-old at home. Uh, that's a whole other challenge for them. Uh, and we uh, help them out academically as best we can. Um, there have been students who have had problems with the law, legal problems, legal issues. Um, if I have 50 students in my program, they're there for 30 different reasons. Yeah. Um, yeah. We don't stigmatize our students in our program. We don't put them in a grade. We don't say to this 19-year-old, okay, you only get credits for grade 10, so now you're a grade 10 student. We don't have grades. We don't. Everybody comes in as an individual with whatever their record indicates at that time. And we start from there. So nobody knows what the other student's issue is unless that student tells them. So um, it's not like we have a grade 10 English, a grade 9 English, a grade 11 English. We have various English classes, various math classes, depending on ability and needs. And it's a mixture which also makes it difficult for the teacher. Yeah. He's got a composite of students, so one might be 16, one might be 19, you know, one is pretty good at math, one's not so good at math, but that's why we have multiple classes as well. Um, again, a small academic environment for those kids is crucial, it's critical. They need help, we provide them with help. If there's 10 kids in a class, the teacher knows who needs help pretty quickly. Um, they can't hide from us. And they have to pass MCAS. Just they like have to the pass MCAS. They have to do all yeah. the same requirements that the state requires of any student getting a high school diploma. They pass, they are required to pass the very same MCAS test at the very same time that a student in day school does. The state determines the dates for MCAS. And they will tell us this is when MCAS is being offered. You have to do it at this particular time. The day school will do their MCAS test during the day. I'll do the same MCAS test, which will come to me separately from the day schools, because I get kids from different schools. We have a separate code and a separate identification with the state for our school. It's the same test. Uh, it's, it's all the same requirements. They have to get the same scores. There's no difference between my kids or day school kids when it comes to passing MCAS. I have to verify all that do all the documentation for MCAS, um, turn in the test at the same time. Yeah, it's the same thing. And, and, and in terms of academics, 
they have to meet my academic requirements, which are the same or greater than the day school in terms of total number of credits. So yeah, they're not getting off easy. Yeah. And one of the first things I tell kids, oh, I think I want to go to night school. Don't think you're coming here if you think it's easier than day school, because that's no reason to come, because it's not it. We're going to hold you accountable, and you're going to do the work, and you're going to stay here until you pass. So it's not like, oh, I'm in grade nine, I get two more years old. You, you're going to earn these number of credits. When you've done these number of credits, you've passed all your MCAS, you've done, what you, you've done your community service hours, then you're eligible to graduate. Um, and some of these kids work full-time jobs, too, right? Oh, absolutely. I have kids who, who work difficult jobs, in many cases, all day. And then come to school four nights a week. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I have kids... Um, yeah, they, they got a, a job and a schedule that they don't control. And I tell them, and most employers are very cooperative. I say, look, just tell your employer... You can't work after 5 o'clock Monday through Thursday. He wants to keep you all weekend. That's fine with me. <laughs> but yeah. you can't. You're going to be out. I have kids who work uh, very difficult physical labor jobs all day and then come to school at night. Um, and some of them have to work for their own economic survival as well as come to school. Um, some of these kids are on their own. They don't have a lot of support outside that's available to them. Some do, some don't. Um, yeah, there's a challenge that they face. We do our best to overcome. And that's why in graduation, I didn't tell those stories because a lot of other people, I don't name the student who that problem exists. I say, look, this is what these students have faced. So you people know how hard they've worked to get to this point. Um, there'll be parents and grandparents sitting in the audience, and they'll be in tears because they never expected that to happen. Yeah. That that child, daughter, granddaughter, son, whatever, was even going to graduate. And it's, it's a very exhilarating night for those people. And the, the other thing I've noticed, which shows something about the dedication of your staff, is a lot of the teachers come to that graduation to see the kids graduate. And, You're right. And they yeah. come on their own. I, you know, I just they say, when's your graduation? I'll, I'll give them the date. I'll be there. I'll be there. I don't ask them to come. Some I do. Anybody want to help? I always get enough help. But others will just say, I'll, I'll be there anyway. And... You're right, they will be sitting in the audience without even telling me they're coming, and I'll notice somebody and I'll try to identify those that I know and I invariably miss somebody. But there's uh, a bond that's created when you dealt with these kids sometimes two or three years, sometimes longer, um, on a weekly basis in a small group setting. They've had several different teachers, um, but yeah, there's, there's a dedication on the part of my evening school staff. All my evening school staff, they all work full-time jobs. So they're coming at night, they're not making any money. Nobody's there because, you know, they can go bartend and make twice as much money. Yeah. Uh, especially these days. <laughs> but yeah, there's a, a, a great dedication and commitment on them. Um, and most of them, and they're not, it's not like the teacher lives down the street. I got some of these teachers who live in Warwick, live in Cranston, live in New Bedford, and they're coming for the graduation on their own. Um, it must be rewarding for them to help these students with getting over there are, the challenges. They because uh, they keep coming back. I have staff that keep coming back. Um, staff, some of whom are retired teachers, who will never walk into school during the day again, but they're coming back to my program. Um, I have people who are no longer in education or once might have been, and now they're in business or do, doing something else. Um, or some who have never been in education but always wanted to do something like this. Um, yeah, there's a great dedication on part of staff and a great commitment to being prepared. Uh, 
you're not going to fool these kids. You're going to be ready to teach a two and a half hour class every night if you want to get anything out of these kids. Others say, why are you wasting my time? You know, I don't have time for this. And the kids will say that. The kids will say to me sometimes, Mr. Aggie, this class is too easy. Now, who says that? Yeah. You know? But these are my nice kids. Mr. Aggie, this is too easy. I already did most of this. I already know this. So, we'll, okay, we're going to change it. We're going to make it more difficult. We're going to add things to it. Um, and then other kids who might not find it so easy, we'll make a combination for them in another classroom or, or whatever we have to do. Part of our philosophy is, in all our programs, which is very, very difficult to implement, we try to teach to the individual, not to the group. That's easy to say, but it's very, very difficult to do. I mean, you can't teach to 10 individuals in the same room, but you can teach to these three individuals who are like minded or, or like prepared, and these three individuals who may are better prepared, and so forth and so on. So, in that sense, we try to meet individual needs of students, um, which is very challenging for a teacher to do. You're not just getting up and, and teaching 20 kids the same thing. We're not trying to do that. We got material to cover, but how we cover it and how fast we cover it depends on who's sitting in front of us. Do, do a lot of these kids come back to say thank you after this is all over? When they... You know, these kids do much more than, than a, a day school student does yeah. for a lot of different reasons. Uh, I'll have students, I, just recently, I was coming out of the country store, and this young lady was walking in, and she said, Hi, Mr. Aggie, how you doing? And I didn't really know who it was. She says, remember me? I said, yes, but I didn't. <laughs> I kind of did, but I wasn't sure of her name. She said, I was in your day school program, and I graduated, and she gave me the year. She says, I just got my bachelor's degree. No, I'm sorry. I just got, yeah, I just got my bachelor's degree. I, I went to community college. I just got my bachelor's degree. She said, it took me 12 years, but I got it. She says, now I'm going on for my master's degree. Wow. I mean, those things make it worthwhile. Here's yeah. a young lady who I would have walked right by. I didn't remember her. Uh, but now she was so proud of the fact that she was accomplishing things that she wanted to do on her own. I have other students. I got a couple of now nurses. Went to my night school program. Uh, and I could go on and on, but yeah, those kids will come up to you and say, um, what will happen now is they'll come up to me and say, Mr. Aggie, are you still there? <laughs> I say, well, yeah, I am. I said, there's always another student like you were. Um, and they'll say, oh, that's good. I said, well, I don't know if it is or not at this point. Um, and they'll tell me what they're doing. Um, I met another young man who was a former night school student. Um, he never went to college or anything, but he's in business, working very well. He, had, he told me he had just bought a house in Somerset. I said, yeah. and he's got two little kids. Uh, and he's a success. Uh, he says, that's all because of you. Well, no, it wasn't really because of me. It was because of what the program did for you. Um, but these kids, as they get older, they know that without that diploma to make that first step, they would not be where they are today. And they really appreciate it. Um, I had another father, very similar, who stopped me. And uh, I knew who he was. I asked him how he was doing. He always oh, doing great and so forth and so on. He says, you know, I got a kid in high school now. I said, what? See, yeah, I got to keep going to high school. He says, I'm going to make sure he doesn't do what I did. <laughs> yeah. uh, he says, I don't want him to end up like me. I said, well, yeah, but you're doing very well now. He says, yeah, but that's because of your program. He said, I want him to stay into school and finish uh, like he should, like I should have. Um, yeah. And you, so yeah, those, those things are rewarding in, in their own sense. 
And, and you've had a few older students in the past who have graduated from there, yeah. too. I remember doing stories. Uh, over the years, I've had a couple of adults. Uh, I can remember one man in particular. I won't mention names. A man came to see me one time, and I thought he, it was a parent coming in to talk to me about something. He asked me about my program. The gentleman lived in Swansea. And he had his own business and was, you know, doing what's, you know, I'm a very successful businessman. And he told me his business, and he was a very successful businessman. He says, but I've been lying to people for 35 years. You know what I mean? So I never graduated from high school. He says, I want to graduate from high school. <laughs> um, and I told him about the program. He only wanted to do it for his own satisfaction. He didn't need to do this for any reason other than he wanted to. He came to school. It took him maybe a year and a half. He graduated. His wife, his children, his grandchildren <coughs> were all there. It was very, very nice. Um, I had another gentleman who came to see me. Uh, he worked in Rhode Island. And there was a promotion within his company, and he was offered the promotion. But he had a GED, not a high school diploma. And the company said, no, oh, you got to have a high school diploma. He said, well, I don't have one. And they said, well, look, find a place to get one. They said, we hear this is about this program in Somerset. Go check it out and come back and talk to us. I talked to the gentleman, told him what it was going to take. I said, you know, I need your record, see where we are. Um, it took him about a year, maybe a little more. The company held that spot for him for a year. Hmm. And when he got his diploma, he got that job. Wow. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of good stories out there. Um, now, you, you worked at, in guidance at the high school for a long time. Do you think that background helped you to be able to um, run this, the night school? You... Um, I'm not so sure. Yeah, I was at guidance for, I don't even know how long, over 20 years. Um, I'm not so sure just the fact that it was guidance as accumulation of my experiences with yeah. recreation with teaching, yeah. with guidance, um, and kind of, you know, just experience. And I'll tell you what has really been a factor in my programs now, I think, is my training in business. I have a degree in business management, originally, you know, and, and, and I did a lot of work in business. I did a lot of, a lot of my education initially was in business. To run my programs, I, I run them as a school administrator, but I also have to run a business. These are self-supporting programs. It's hard to run a business and meet the educational needs you're trying to do, to, to blend them together. And in business, there was a lot of preparation, a lot of planning. Uh, I just found my business background was very instrumental and helpful to me as a school administrator. In addition, then I got, you know, a master's degree in school administration and all those other things. Um, I did study in community education, community school concept, I don't know, back in the 1970s, um, which nobody was doing at that time. That was at Worcester. At that time, it was Worcester State College. Um, it was a master's program. So I think it's a combination of all those things. Um, certainly, I'm in a situation where I can do things a little differently than I was able to do them during the day school. But you have to do them differently. Yeah. It's a different program. It's a different concept. If we have the same goal, but we have to travel a different road to get there. Wow. And sometimes you gotta build your own road as you're going along. Um, but yeah, I think it's a combination of experiences and uh, 
and failures. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, you, you you try to learn from your failures. I've had enough of them. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, I, th I think it's a combination of things. Now, you've been running all these programs for a long time now. You probably could have retired by now if you wanted to, but you you keep you stay around to help all these students. Wait, why do you continue to keep doing this? You know, I know you're going to ask that question. <laughs> And I don't have an answer because I can't give you a definitive answer. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've been around a long time. Some people think I've been in too long. Um, in many respects, I think it's an advantage. Some respects, I think I don't fit here anymore. I'm, I'm too what I call old school. <laughs> you know, we. I grew up doing things differently. Uh, I did things differently as a teacher, as an administrator, than the way I see education moving today. Um, sometimes, um, you know, I think the old ways are better, <laughs> but that's because I'm old, <laughs> so they're not necessarily better. Um, why do I stay? I don't know, George. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, my... it, it, it becomes. I had a gentleman say that to me the other day, same thing. He said, well, it's because it's in your blood. Well, I guess at this point it is. Um, sooner or later, and I don't know when it's going to be, but at this point it'll probably be sooner than later. Um, I've got to, I'm going to have to say that's enough. I'm done. Um, I don't know when that will be. Uh, one of my concerns now, one of my personal concerns and professional concerns, I spent 25 years building these programs. Oh. Uh, I think they're valuable programs. I think they need to continue. And I'm sure the superintendent and others think they need to continue, but we've got to come up with a way to make sure they do. Because it has to be different. It'll have to be broken up. It's too big for one person to handle now. You know, uh, my fault, I built myself a monster, uh, but I can't hand that monster off to somebody else. I gotta figure out a way to give pieces to different people who are committed and want to do this. Uh, so that's, that's the next process, I guess. How are we gonna do this to ensure its success? Uh, and not for me, but for the kids. There's always going to be kids who need these programs or want these programs. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know the answer to that. Why am I here? Um, I don't know. Yeah. Some you, people you, ask that. Why am I here? I don't know. You just, just from talking to you over the years, you just seem to have such a passion for education. And whenever I ask you in a your opinion about a certain issue. You seem to have very strong opinions about education. And, and well, yeah, I do. I do have very strong opinions about things, which also can be a disadvantage at times, uh, especially at home. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I am passionate about what I do or what I see needs to be done and trying to come up with ways to find answers. Um, and not make excuses for why it's that way. Well, find an answer to fix it. Um, yeah, I am passionate. I, I do care. Um, and and I, as this gentleman just said, well, I'm almost afraid to stop. Yeah. You know? uh, for my own health as well as for the program, you know, what? I don't know. I'm, I'm at a, I'm getting to the point where I'm at a crossroads. I know the end has to come soon or sometime. How do I ensure that it continues so that I can walk away saying, okay, it's in good hands. Um, whether it is or not, I got to walk away at some point. Yeah. I just hope I reach the point where I'm able to walk away and, you know, I just don't pass away. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I don't know. Um, 
but I'm asked that question. Sometimes I th I'm not sure it's because the prison wants me to leave. <laughs> Why are you still here? You know, we've seen yeah. enough of you, or because they don't want me to leave. I, I don't know, but eventually, it has to be my decision and a decision that's made with my family. Um, yeah. I already know what their answer is going to be. They don't understand why I'm here, why I'm still doing it either. Um, so uh, I don't, I don't know. Well, that's going to be a huge loss, and um, I can't imagine anyone else being there but you. But thanks for coming in today. Well, I thank and, you for and, the and, opportunity and the time to speak. Uh, as usual, I probably spoke too much, but <laughs> I, it's just how I feel and what I think. And thank you for the opportunity, and thank you for all you do. Because you. I've always said, without George Austin, the town would be at a loss with getting the proper information they need at the mm -hmm. right time. And I'm glad to see you part of this program mm -hmm. now. Well, we're going to continue to do that at SATV, and we're going to provide even more than we have in the past. Good, so. good, that'll be good. Because I'll have plenty of programs to give you. <laughs> I know that. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, please... You look up the programs that Bill Aguiar offers at the Kids Summer Learning Center, at the summer school, and at the community evening school. He provides a lot of great programs.